I know exactly why you're here. Yeah, I know, unbelievable, right? But, uh, yeah, it happens to the best of us. You just go back and do the problem. But, I know, this is probably what you did. You got some denominator, say, like, x squared, x minus 3 cubed. I don't even worry about the numerator. And you probably went ahead, because maybe you haven't done it for a long time, and just broke it apart like you would a normal partial fraction, like this. Just figure, like, well, you know, I got all the factors, put them all out there like this. And you would probably be surprised to find that you are wrong. And you'll probably sit there for a long time wondering, well, what the hell's going on? I got all the factors. I did the partial fraction decomposition correctly. And what's going on here, basically? I can't figure out why. And then you probably got really frustrated because you insisted on figuring it out yourself. And you finally cracked and came over here, and then you saw this and smacked yourself in the forehead. So, yeah, just go back and finish the problem. But, uh, you know, the correct way of doing this is, like this says, if you have in the denominator q to the x something in the form of x minus a to the n, it's got to be broken up like this, x minus a, x minus a squared, plus x minus a to the n. So whatever power it is, that's how many of them I need to do. And each one has its own separate fraction. And that's it. So instead of instead of it being written like this, it it should be written like this. And that is the correct way of beginning to pursue that problem. Then you would just continue normally. So, I know that's why you're here. There's no other way you'd be here. No other reason you would be here. Because I know you didn't forget how to do this. So, the amount of calculus problems that we've done over time is pretty ludicrous. I guess you could forget, uh, well... You wouldn't forget this, you know how to do division, but it's the same same thing applies for for if I were to have an irreducible quadratic or cubic or, or whatever in there, then I've got to break it apart like this as well. Same same thing, except in, instead of a1, it would be a1x plus b1, a2x plus b2, a to the nx plus b to the n. And then these, these powers would go up, you know, 1, 2, 3, that's... That was three, one, two, three. Same thing. But for whatever reason, if you completely forgot how to do this, then I can't, I cannot believe that that would be the case. But I'm already here, and I like to do these, as you very well know. <laughs> Sometimes we'll do one, or we'll do something easy. Not that I want to do an easy one, but just they take forever to do. It's annoying. Not really. I, I like to do them. But it's just fun to do because it's just really easy, but I don't want to make like a half an hour video for something that I just want to get to the point already. So I'll just break it apart like a uh, you know, normal factor. Normal factoring. Well, I guess... I still can't believe that I would forget something like this, but if, if I did, just in case... If you are really there and you actually forgot this, I'm going to have a hard time forgiving you. But, you know, I don't know what happened to you. But if, if you somehow forgot this, this is the basic idea. So I've got a, I've got a, I've got a fraction. Well, you probably remember this at least. If you don't know this, then you have no business being here. But normally in the past, I've had questions like this. And the question might be like, well, what would what would it be if it was written as one fraction? So I multiply this side by x minus 3, both top and bottom, and this side by x squared, top and bottom, and then I add them together, since it's a common denominator, and then I have written it as a single fraction. What partial fraction decomposition tries to do is to undo that. I have a single... Uh, yeah, I can't run. Uh, I can't run this video 
per RAM without anything else running. I think I left my chest database open. It's two two things that chew up tons of tons of tons of CPU power. That stupid computer's probably analyzing that opening or whatever. But anyways, yeah. So we've got a fraction. I want to break it apart into two separate fractions. So this is what I'm going to try to do. So I've got it written like this. Let me change back to the other color. I could think of this as... Let's rewrite it over here for a second. This is equal to that, which is also equal to some numerator x minus 3 plus some other numerator that I don't know. These two things will be equal to each other. I just don't know. I don't know what they are. So the next step is to say, well, these top parts should be equal. These bottom parts are going to be equal. So what I'm going to do is multiply both side, both top and bottom by x minus 3, x minus 2 to get rid of the denominators just so I don't have to deal with that anymore. Everything. So this will cancel out this, and this will cancel that, so it'll be a, no, just write it out. So this will cancel, I'll be left with x, and this is equal to a times x minus two plus b times x minus three. And, well, this is a really easy one, so I can just go ahead and just solve this by i. I can say if x is equal to positive 2, then this a will be 0, and it will leave this b. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. x is equal to 2, so I divide by minus 1. b is equal to minus 2. And if I were to go back here and say, well, if x was equal to positive 3, then this would be zero. X minus two, or yeah, X minus two, which is three minus two, which is one. X is still equal to three, and I will get A is equal to three. Now this is possible because it's a very easy one. Most of the time, it's not gonna be solely solvable like that. I may be able to get a few, Usually, in a lot of the problems, I'll be able to get at least one of the coefficients. Now, you can get a lot of coefficients, please. I remember in one problem, I think in calculus a while ago, I think I went all the way out to the letter I. Sometimes you're able to at least eliminate a few. I mean, if you ever see an opportunity to you know, not waste your and my time, go ahead and solve it like that. But most of the times, you're going to have to set up a matrix E or a system equation, whatever you want to call it. So what you're going to have to do is multiply all of these out. Now, again, I just want to reemphasize this is a very simple one. I don't really need to do this, but let's just suppose that I couldn't do that. I would multiply these out and try to gather all the like terms together. So ax minus 2a plus bx minus 3b. Now what I'm going to do is gather all the like terms together. So x a plus b plus minus 2a minus 3b. And I gather these together because these are the terms that belong to the constant. I gather these together because these are the terms that belong to the coefficient of x. And that's basically what's going to be happening here is I'm going to gather all of the terms of the same coefficient and then I'm just going to solve for the coefficient since these two equation since these two things are equal to each other what these are basically solving for is the coefficient the coefficient of x here is 1 so I can say that a plus b is equal to 1 and these are the coefficients for the constant term this is x plus 0 so the coefficient for the constant term is zero. So minus two a minus three b has to equal to zero. Has to be equal to zero.
And now it's more obvious what I have to do. I just I can solve it by using substitution. I can set up a matrix. I can solve it whatever I whatever method I feel like doing. But it's just a system of equations. So here I'll just multiply this by three. That will give me a positive three b, which will cancel, and then uh, you know I'll just add them together to solve normally. So multiply this by three, and then add. So I get three a. So I get one a, three b minus three b. So I get zero b. Three times one is three. Plus zero is three. So a is equal to three. And then once I have this, I can go back to any of my equations and just plug in a is equal to three, and anywhere I can get a solution which I can here because there are only two terms. But in the case where there might be three terms, then I might have to get one more before I did before I did that. But here I just go back in here, a is equal to three, so this is a three. Three plus b is equal to one. Three minus one is b is equal to minus two. So I got them, got the same things that I had got through solving by i. And that means that the partial fraction decomposition of this is equal to a is equal to 3, so 3 over x minus 3 plus, well, I can, I can just write a minus 2 up there, or I can just do minus 2 x minus 2. So that is partial fraction decomposition for you.